Lesson 9-4, Experimental Design. All right, so one type of study is experiments. And so how do we design these experiments? So we have two types. We have a controlled experiment where groups are given the same condition except for the variable of interest. So everything's the same about the two groups. One gets a treatment, the other doesn't. Treatment group gets the treatment, like an experimental drug or whatever. The control gr group does not. Sometimes they're given a placebo, it's like a fake drug that doesn't do anything. Most often, if they're doing drugs, it's sugar. Or we could do a randomized comparative experiment where the members are randomly assigned to the groups to try to eliminate bias. All right, determine whether the study is a randomized computer ex or comparative experiment. If it is, describe the treatment, the treatment group, and the control group. If it's not, explain why not, and discuss whether the conclusions drawn from the study are valid. So at a certain car dealership, customers were given a choice of whether to have side cameras installed in the new cars for free. 40 car owners who had the cameras installed were monitored for two years, as were 40 car owners who did not have the side cameras installed. At the end of the two years, car owners who had side cameras installed had 22% fewer car accidents than car owners in the other group. So, is this randomized? And the answer is not randomized. Why is it not randomized? Because the customers were given the choice. They were not randomly assigned. And so is it valid or not valid? Well, we don't know. There may be other reasons why the car owners had side cameras installed had fewer car accidents. For example, maybe the car owners who voluntarily chose the cameras installed are more likely to be safe drivers anyway because they have a greater concern for car safety. Hmm. Why don't you pause this and try number one. And its answers are, yes, it is randomized, comparative, I spelled that wrong, experiment. Uh, if that's the case, then our treatment, the treatment is the thing that's changing, which is the drug for insomnia and the treatment group are those who got the drug and the control group are those who got the placebo. All right, so uh, what can we learn with experiments? So comparative studies and causality. An experiment that's well-designed, randomized, comparative experiment by eliminating all other variables can conclude cause and effect relationships. But it has to be well-designed and we have to actually take care of, account for all the other variables before you can conclude cause and effect. Simple observations cannot show cause and effect. They can only show correlation which means um, these things seem to be related you know, as one changes the other changes but it cannot show causality, it cannot show observations cannot show that one thing causes something else. We can just show that there's a relationship. But you cannot show from just an observation that one thing causes something else. 
it must be a randomized comparative experiment to show cause and effect. All right, so let's determine whether the following research topic is best investigated through an experiment or an observational study. Then describe the design of the experiment or observational study. A researcher wants to know whether eating carrots daily improves a person's eyesight. Well, an experiment might be kind of hard here. You'd have to have a lot of people and make sure they actually eat carrots daily and you're probably not going to see quick results. It'll have to be over a long period of time. So probably the best thing to do uh, is an observational study. Now, we just got done saying that that can't show cause and effect. So there can be a, we could conclude a relationship between eating carrots and improved eyesight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that eating carrots does in fact improve eyesight. All right, we're supposed to describe it. So you'd randomly choose one group of people who already eats carrots daily, and then another group of people who never eats carrots, and then check the eyesights of both groups. So you'd have a group who eats carrots already, and then you'd have another group who does not eat carrots, and then we check their eyesight. And since this is observational, it's what's been happening over a long period of time, it will, again, only show a relationship. It cannot show cause and effect. Did you pause this? Will you try number five? The answer should be observational. You randomly choose one group of people who smoke and another group who don't smoke, and then find the body mass index of people in both groups. So a school wants to test the effectiveness of an online program designed to teach writing skills. Identify the potential problem, if any, with each experimental design, and then describe how you can improve it. So 40 students volunteer to use the online program. 40 other students volunteer to refrain from using the online program. After six months, each student is evaluated and is determined that the students who have been using the online program improved their writing skills more than the other group. So, what's the issue there? Probably the word volunteer. The groups are not randomized. And you know what? I'm betting those who volunteer to learn writing and those who volunteer to not learn writing are different. So, the groups are not similar. So um, what you need to do to improve is you need to randomly assign. Randomly assign the students to the two groups. Let's try another one. The school randomly selects 100 students from each grade. Within each grade, the students are randomly assigned to use online program or refrain from using it. After six months, a significantly larger number of students who use the online program showed gains in their writing skills. So what's the problem there? That's right. There are no potential problems. That's a good setup. Why don't you try number nine? Pause it while you answer it. Part A is they should do the same activity 
and part B is no potential problems.